and I do not recall that we looked for discontinuity among those documents recently. We also have a new HR person since then whose experience we could benefit from. So I think it would be appropriate to allow staff to review this first and then make decisions about what further steps are appropriate. The bottom line is um, from time to time we have made changes in particular parts of the policy manual. The last major one had to do with um, family leave activities at a time when we had multiple uh, staff for whom that was an issue. And I don't recall any major areas that we've looked at or revised since then. There might have been some minor tweaks. But the bottom line is it's appropriate from time to time a new director and a new HR person certainly give us fresh perspectives on those, and I would let that happen and then see what next is recommended. So, so that's what this bylaws and policy manual is. It sort of says discussion item. It basically says we're going to have. It means we're going to have a discussion. Not quite yet, but um, there are. There are a number of things. I mean, Dan has also raised videotaping. That would be probably something in our, our bylaws. You know, let's look at that. What, what, how do we function? How does the library function? And sort of settle those issues and then just move forward. What do you mean by videotaping? Dan would like to have committee members, uh, committee meetings videotaped. So let's have a conversation about it. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. So, the fundraising letter. Anthony has asked us to reconsider, to relook at the fundraising letter. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the reasons that you understand, I spoke on my own experience that um, it's a different constituency. Nobody has to write a letter that they are a lot of memorial or memories in honor of and it gives them an opportunity to express that sentiment. But Anthony would like us to reconsider, strongly, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether this is the right year to send out the letter. Um, and I certainly, you know, I certainly understand that and, um, and I'm perfectly agreeable, so it just, I think it's a good idea. Pardon? I think it's a good idea. I think, I mean, I think because I, based on who we are as a library, I mean, and also we, as a library, we do so much for the community. I mean, it's even possible that next year, rather than do a fundraising letter this year, we do something next year where we actually, where some, some of the entities that we work with in the community, maybe try to, to direct some funding in their direction versus towards the library, um, since that's something that it's not a critical need for us right now. So it could be a fundraising letter, but maybe, again, to kind of enrich uh, some other aspect of the community on behalf of the library and, right. our, and like the library partner. Last year we said a portion could go yeah. towards disaster assistance right. and other libraries that are affected that way, and that's what people could uh, indicate that. I think that's that's a fine idea to take a break if, if you yeah, like. Yeah, but we could take a break I for this a year. Yeah. Um, let's, let's get our annual report. But also, I just wanted to say, do are we still we still have that option on the website though? If people, mm -hmm. yes. and I think that's fine. I think that that way, if somebody's moved to do that that way. Because uh, to me, the, what's always kind of the thing that bothered me about the letter was just that the cost of mailing it versus the amount of money we raised, I just felt like that's because mailing is so expensive and printing is so expensive um, that I think it's all right to take a break. That's what bothered me is we said it was a creativity grant. Right. And the creativity grants were things that the library could already. Uh, yeah. Okay, say again. Uh, the letter would always say it's for creativity grants, but a lot of times the creativity grants could be funded with re a library revenues, and I think over time you didn't get a lot of creativity grants. Mm -hmm. So I think that whole thing needs to be re-looked at. Yes. Yeah, I think so I, I don't know I want to do a vote on this, but I'm hearing that the consensus yeah, I think it's Okay, all in favor of... T uh, of taking a break on fundraising. Tabling fundraising on fundraising letter until favorite. next year? Yeah, okay. yes. Yeah. All right. I, 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 All right. All right. So we will take a break on that, and we will, you will.
we consider it possibly that could be helpful. We'll worry yeah. about it in the future. I would recommend that that be reported to the minutes as consensus rather than a vote. Okay, consensus. Okay. All right. Anthony, it's time for the director's yeah, report. First, director's report. First one. Yes. Well, thank you all, and thank you for the welcome. It's great to be here. Um, I just want to briefly summarize the documents that are as part of the director's report um, this month. And there are just six items that I'd like to cover briefly. Um, I was not here for, for October, so I'm taking um, word from the staff and uh, from, <clears throat> from what I've met with them on. So I will do my best to characterize what that experience was since I wasn't here. Um, on October 18th, um, author Abdi Noor Iftin presented his book talk on Call Me an American as part of the library's Meet the Author series. The series, the series was coordinated by Amy Barrow and Barb Goodman. Um, Trustee McDonald gave a welcoming remarks and introduced Mr. Iftin. Ifton was warmly received by an audience of about 150 people at Wilmot Junior High School Auditorium. His presentation was by all accounts informative and lively, and the Q&A that followed his talk demonstrated that the audience was engaged in, by his story. Um, throughout the month of October, patrons were treated to a variety of programs that Jill McCown coordinated in honor of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, highlights included a movie retrospective and a presentation by Chicago's own International Museum of Surgical Science. Teens took part in um, an escape from Dr. Frankenstein's lab, coordinated by Krista Hotley. Um, on the uh, program attendance report, you'll see that so far this fiscal year, we've seen an increase in uh, a 20% increase in the number of library programs that have been offered, mm -hmm. and that there's been a 30% increase in the attendance of those programs. So I'm really eager to explore those statistics with the staff and learn more about how we were able to achieve that success and what, how we can capitalize on that. Um, our popular graphic novel collection is in the process of being relocated from the nonfiction uh, section in the lower level to the fiction room on the first floor. There are going to be two sections, um, fiction, which is arranged by author, and nonfiction by Dewey subject number. And we'll have new titles um, in that collection that will be um, shelved with the recent arrivals. Mm -hmm. To make room for that collection, we did some weeding in the fiction room. Uh, the paperback collection has been weeded and repositioned. Um, a portion of that collection was um, our romances. A lot of the Harlequins that were in, in damaged condition were discarded, but we do want to note that there's a very substantial collection um, of Harlequins and other romances that are part of the My Media Mall digital ebook collection and available via the Libby app. Um, so we invite folks to check that out. And lastly, um, I'm really excited to announce today that we uh, were able to fill our head of youth services position. So to be a new director and to be able to hire a, a manager is a pretty exciting thing to do. Um, so Andrea Vaughn Johnson uh, has accepted the position of youth services and she'll be starting on December 3rd. No relation, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrea comes to us um, from New York. Um, she uh, has 18 years of experience as a children's librarian and coordinator in both suburban and urban libraries. Her most recent role of coordinator of school age services found her providing leadership and support for school age services over Brooklyn Public Library's 59 library locations, including oversight of the system's annual summer reading program. Uh, she holds an MLS from CW Post Campus of Long Island University and a BA in English and Sociology from SUNY Stony Brook. And she's very active in library professional associations. Um, our hiring committee, which comprised of Gail, Janet, and Krista, as well as the youth services staff, were outstanding in reviewing our applications um, and recommending our finalists. They did a fabulous job. We're really excited for her to join us. And when will she be starting? December 3rd. Great. And she'll have an opportunity to meet with um, outgoing manager uh, Karen Joshi as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have any questions from the director's report? Is she, was she moving here anyway? She's already here, yes. Okay. That's good. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, committee, re committee reports. Uh, Jenny. Okay. Um, so as we did have a meeting of the Facilities and Equipment Committee, um, which also um, included our um, landscape committee, which sort of a subcommittee or extra committee. I don't even know how we, what we call it. But anyway, so we, we did have, we had an almost two hour meeting to discuss sort of where we are um, with the landscape plan and 
Um, we really are, it's pretty much done. Um, and the construction drawings, have, the 90% construction drawings have been done um, by Tesca, which is the firm that did the landscape design. Um, and we were able to resolve a couple outstanding issues um, in the plan. So I feel like we're pretty well behind this plan, though um, we do have some members of the public who feel that we are not, um, that we, I don't know, that we should start all over. I don't know. Um, and I just would like to say that we have given a lot of thought to sustainability and to um, native plants and using the plants we can use that we currently have. Um, the intent is certainly not just to tear everything up and start again, but to thoughtfully use what we have. Um, and we actually are, end up reducing our, um, our, our uh, hardscape footprint, so there will actually be more green space. Um, anything that we're taking out as far as the native garden will be replaced and expanded, in fact. Um, so and a lot of thought and effort and work has gone into this um, over the past, I don't know, several months to a year. So I think it, it, I don't want it to be mischaracterized that we really don't care about environmental issues because we really do care deeply about them and about climate change. And we, in our renovation, we did a lot of um, things for um, putting in geothermal, um, putting in LED lighting, updating our um, systems to make them more energy efficient. Um, so it, it is an emphasis of the library. I think it's something we care about. We realize the community cares about it, um, and we honor that. Um, the firm we selected has done a lot of work with native plants and, and sustainable projects in Evanston and nearby, and they have a considerable amount of expertise. Um, so I, I just wanted to put that out there as far as um, the work the committee has done. Uh, we've worked with members of staff um, and with people that will be involved in working with the, um, the new landscaping. And the idea is really to improve the outside improve safety. There are definitely some safety issues with the landscape as it currently stands. And again, I, as I said, we're going to be re reducing our footprint, um, and which will um, help for um, stormwater um, absorption and everything. So um, so where we are really is we just, um, I think Anthony can speak, we got the request for qualifications. We have two firms that have brought those back. Um, and. You, are you going to report on that tonight, or did you want to review them some more? I would still need a little more time to review that okay. documentation and check the references, but yes, I'll, I'll be presenting that information to you in advance of the meeting next month. Right. So, so probably the next thing we'll be doing is looking at um, hiring a construction manager to go ahead um, with um, who would help us going forward the, with the project and then start to come up with bid documents. Um, so probably in the new year, we'll be looking at having a board vote on the plan. Um, does anyone have any questions? I think it's more than a landscape project. I think yeah. it's more outside renovation because you're doing the safety sidewalks. Right. Also, I think that the thing that you didn't mention is that you all have looked, the committee has looked at ways to honor all those memorials that are out there. Yes, that's, that's correct. We're um, committed to contacting anyone who can be contacted and preserving the memorials we can. Um, some, some we won't be able to, um, but there will be a memorialization probably inside the library. Again, that's something we haven't really come up with a perfect plan for that. And some of the things, like the large benches that are outside, we hope to move those inside into the vestibule. So we are very mindful of the memorials that exist on the property um, and, you know, to continuing honoring those, uh, those people that were memorialized. So, um, yeah, it's not, again, it's not like we're just disregarding that either. Plus, I think the goal, too, is not to take over your committee, because yeah. I just sort of sit from afar, <laughs> is to make it more, to bring the library outside, especially right. with the youth program, so that the space is better utilized. Right. That's one of the things that we want to try to 
you know, maximize that gathering mm -hmm. space in the summer, which is used for outdoor programming. Um, and we actually, the thought about doing the movies, that's, we haven't really decided either way, but try to be mindful of our neighbors and everything with that. So um, anyway, so yeah, it does have man, uh, multi purposes, um, but just so the community knows we are mindful of the environmental impact. And Anthony, you were going to put a spot on the website um, that's going to have the landscaping plan there. Do you know when that'll happen? Tesco's currently producing the documents for us. They expect to have them by the end of the month. We received a, um, a modified schematic drawing that kind of mm -hmm. simplifies the detail of the project in a way that's easy to understand mm -hmm. um, and, and labels all the different areas that are being affected and the purpose behind the changes there, as well as um, an update of the master plan documentation. So all of that information will be compiled and presented on the website in a way that um, a layperson can understand what the scope of the work is right. and uh, why we're endeavoring the project, including the timeline. As I understand, some of the issues that were raised were issues relating to parts of the project that were not 